I'm Anil Kumar and in this video, I'll discuss fundamental counting principles. For those of you who will be doing probability, this video could be a very important one. With the help of the principle which you are going to understand, you can actually count the possibilities for actions to take place one after another. Let me start with the counting principle itself. I just copied the definition as if first action can be performed in m ways and second action can be performed in n ways, then these two actions can be performed in this order in m times n ways. This is also called rule of product. It is important to note that this can be extended. That is to say, if first action can be performed in m ways, second can be performed in n ways, third can be performed in p ways, in that case, three actions can be performed in m n times p ways. So likewise, you can continue multiplying them since we are multiplying all these ways to get the total number of possibilities it is also called rule of product. I hope this part is very clear. Now, let me take examples to elaborate. Tree diagram, as you have commonly seen, is an excellent way of representing it. First example here is tossing three coins one after another. So what happens? Let's say I have three coins. I toss them one after another. So first coin. The possibility is you could get either head or tails, right? Now, you toss the second coin. Now, when you toss the second coin, again, the possibility is heads or tails. Now, in the first, there were two. So, in the second, if you get tails first, then also the possibility is heads or tails. For the third toss, Again, two more possibilities, correct? So we can get heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails, correct? What is important to note here is, for the first coin, let's say this is the first coin, there are two possibilities, right? For the second coin, there are again two possibilities and for the third coin there are again two possibilities so how many outcomes do you expect when this action is done one after another in this particular order you will get two times two times two that is eight is the total number of possibilities right as you can see now let us elaborate it a bit more so possibilities head 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 that is kind of first right head 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 then head head and tail head tail head and kind of you can continue so when you come to the end it could be tail tail and head tail tail and tail so when you count these possibilities there will be eight in number right in any t diagram tree diagram you'll always find that this rule can be applied uh, for example in sandwich options so you could make a sandwich with different kinds of breads and fillings so if you have let us say uh, three breads three kinds of breads let us say uh, let me write down here for example as options for breads are three and then options for let's say fillings are let us say four and then let's say we have some sauce on top okay so and there are, these options are let us say two in that case if you make a tree diagram you can find all possible options but you can get to the result even without doing that by applying the fundamental counting principles so that is that is what we are trying to understand so here the first action can be performed in three ways the second can be performed in four ways the third 
can be performed in two ways. And therefore, all the three in this order can be performed in how many ways? It can be performed in 3 times 4 times 2. That is 12 times 2, 24 ways. So that is how we can use the fundamental counting principle and get to the result very quickly. Now this is a very important principle, especially when you're doing probability questions and you need to find total number of options, right? Let me take another example which is also related. Let's say we have to go from point A to B to C. For example, let's say this is our point A, right? This is point A, this is point B, and this is point C. From A to B, let's say we have we could go in these different ways. And from B to C, let us say we could go in two ways. Then the idea is in how many ways can you go from A to B to C, right? Since we have three ways here, right? Three ways and two ways there, three times two, should give you the answer. There are six options, correct? There are six options. So what you can do is you can actually number these and then find options either making like a tree or just writing them down. For example, from A to B, you can wrote 1, wrote 2, wrote 3. Let's call them wrote 4 and 5. Then, of course, one way could be that you have to go from road 1 and then take road 4, right? So one way is from road 1 to 4 and then road 1 to 5, road 1 to 5. This is one second way. Then if you take road 2, then the options will be 2 and then 4 or it could be 2 and then 5, right? Okay. If you take road 3 to go from A to B, then you have two options. You could go 3, 4, or you could go 3, 5, right? As you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different ways, right? So, so 6 different ways. So what I'm trying to say here is that fundamental counting principle works in all such situations where there are multiple options and all of them are performed in a particular order. If that is the case, then you can multiply all the number of options to get the result. So nice, right? What you can also do is you can make a tree diagram for this like that and also get such options, correct? So these are different ways of understanding but the whole idea, I hope is clear, is to understand when to apply the rule of product, right? So you have to apply the rule of product when there are different actions being taken in a particular order, right? So that is when you have to apply this rule, which you could represent in the form of a tree diagram. So that is where it should be applied. And now you understand very clearly how to get the total number of options. By having product of all those, we'll get total number of options for doing all these events one after the other in that order, right? So it's kind of important to understand this in this order. Perfect. So I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this principle is very clear. We'll move on from here. I'll give you some practice questions and then understand what is the rule of sum? Thank you and all the best.